We've been talking about how expensive used cars have been for quite a long time now, but the prices of new cars are also ridiculous. All five cars in this video are cheaper than the Golf R that I spec'd online just now, with just some cool features on it. And I would say all five of these cars are gonna turn a lot more heads than the Golf R will. They may also bring more problems, but we'll talk about that in the video. If you wanna support the channel, do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> Let's keep this video off with the first generation Aston Martin Vanquish, which is absolutely a special car, not only because it's an Aston, but because it's a James Bond featured one, which is always adds a premium to the car. It comes with a 5.9 litre V12 engine, which makes 520 brake horsepower, more than any other car on this list, taking it to 60 in 4.6 seconds, not bad for a car first released in 2001. It was the flagship car for Aston Martin on release, and that V12 was the most powerful the company had ever produced. It's riddled with new technology too for its time, like the carbon fibre and and alloy chassis. It's an Ian Callum design and it doesn't look insanely different to the stunning DB9 in my books, which makes sense given it's a shared designer. I fell in love with this car as a seven year old, watching Die Another Day on repeat in my living room as James Bond drifted his Q modified car around the ice with missiles flying out of the bonnet, and I was lucky enough to actually see the car used for the film a couple of years ago. Granted, it will never be as iconic as the DB5, but it definitely holds its own as a famous Aston from the franchise, especially given it won third place in the list of the best film cars ever by Auto trader behind the Italian job minis and the DB5. Plus it's incredibly rare to see them out on the roads in the UK, you'll definitely gain a bit of attention at a car event if you're driving one of these. They start at around £50,000 with Golf R money getting you a 2002 model with around 25,000 miles on the clock. Coil packs are known to go but the engine is generally reliable, though specialists have said it's worth remembering that the car was £180,000 when new and maintenance prices will reflect that. From an Aston Martin to a Ferrari, it's crazy the badges you're getting for Golf R money these days. And it's not some dead Ferrari either, it's the 360 Modena with its 3.6 litre V8 engine that makes 400 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.5 seconds, just edging out the Vanquish. It arrived in 1999 as the lead supercar for the brand, picking up where the F355 left off, and as the predecessor to the F430, 458, 488 and the F8 Tributo line of cars. It does however come from the cheaper era of the brand, and I don't mean prices of cars, I mean car parts used. My dad who's a car mechanic has worked on a couple of these and was surprised how many Fiat parts were used. If you can ignore that though, you're getting a Pininfarina designed Ferrari which is about as perfect a formula as it gets in my book and you can actually get it as either a Modena Coupe or a Spider convertible depending on preference. I honestly think both look good, the Modena looks a little bit more classy and the convertible is a cool car regardless. The Coupe was named after the town of Modena which is Enzo Ferrari's birthplace and both came as either a gated manual or F1 automatic. I've driven the gated manual Modena and I can tell you it is quite a visceral Ferrari to drive, it definitely shows its age but still has that typical Ferrari feel to it. The only bit of heresy I'll give you to mull over is that the gated manual doesn't actually feel that comfortable, it looks cool but that's about it, but then a reminder, I only drove it on track and not on normal roads. These start at around £53,000 with your Golf R price getting you a 2003 model with around 25,000 miles on the clock. If you want to see the cost of maintaining one of these, definitely check out Seen Through Glass's video on exactly that topic, it's both scary and eye-opening at the same time. Next up we have my second favourite car on this list, but the ranked third car on the list in terms of 0-60, it's the Cayman GT4, a car focused on going fast on track and looking good while doing it. You get a 3.8 litre flat 6 engine in one of these which puts up 379 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.3 seconds which you won't even think about when you're violating your way around a track. That engine comes from the 991-911 GTS, though it's actually slightly detuned and came only as a manual, with no PDK option whatsoever, appealing to the more purest Porsche fans. The standard 981 is a lovely looking car, I would know having driven both the standard and the S, but the GT4 takes it to a whole different level, turning a nice sports car into something a bit more special and exotic. The larger vents on the front and side, the rear wing, the front splitter, the rear diffuser, then the half roll cage with a club sport package, all are tell tail signs of the car being a little bit more aggressive and though some racing drivers have complained of understeer, the average human is going to have an exceptional time driving around in one of these and it's genuinely crazy that they're going for Golf R money now. And that understeer can't be too bad considering it managed a Nürburgring time of 7 minutes 40 seconds which is genuinely very quick, faster than Nissan GTR, the 911 GT3 RS from the 997 generation and a bunch of other monsters. You'll find this is for the same money as the Golf R though at the bottom end, making it a little bit more expensive but still a lot of car for the money. And they're generally pretty reliable too, just make sure that if they have been tracked they've also had the right maintenance to go with. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you are do hit the like button 
and subscribe as well if you're new. And let me know in the comments down below, would you rather have one of these five cars or a VW Golf R brand new, obviously. Let me know in the comments down below. Taking second on this list, we've had a Ferrari. We've got to get a Lambo into the video, and it's the Gen 1 Gallardo, which is literally an exotic supercar for the same price as a Golf R, considering the Gallardo literally starts at the price of our new Golf R. And for that money, you're getting a 5 litre V10 engine, which uses 493 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 3.9 seconds. Not bad at all. It's the best selling Lamborghini of all time, the predecessor to the Huracan, and the little sibling to the Murcielago, followed by the Ventador, so it certainly has all the right credentials, but that popularity has also affected longer term prices, hence for a time they were even cheaper than you're seeing in this vid. It came as either a manual or the e-gear automatic, which has been known to cause problems in the Gen 1 cars, so better stick with the manual, though even that isn't without potential issues, given the clutch is also a known weak point and relatively punchy to fix. But if you're buying a Lambo, even a cheaper one, you're probably expecting to pay reasonably high maintenance costs. And if you can stomach those, you are getting a mad cool car, part of Lamborghini history and a car designed by the same man that designed the Aventador, Diablo VT and a few others considering he's now roguely head of design at Hyundai. Ideally you want to get one from post 2005 where the company did some cool updates to the car that dealt with much of its criticism, a better sounding exhaust for one as well as some changes to the suspension to make it feel a little bit more planted. Nice to see Audi having an impact early on given this was only the second car that arrived under their ownership and laid the foundations for the Lambos that we see on the roads today. Taking the top spot on the list is not only the quickest car it's the one with the least power and my personal favorite the Lotus Exceed 350 Sport with its 3.5 litre supercharged V6 engine which produces 345 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 3.8 seconds made possible by its real focus on lightness this is a series 3 Exceed which is by far my favorite I was a fan of the previous two series as well then this came out in 2012 and I fell in love all over again it's larger than its predecessors but maintains the simple Lotus stylings both outside and in with the interior being a particular particularly beautiful part of the car. I really think the minimalist, stripped out, very manual interior does wonders on these, particularly the exposed gear linkage in the manuals. It's by no means a practical car, but it's not supposed to be. Like the Cayman GT4, it's supposed to go fast around a track, and it's supposed to make you feel like you're doing the work to make it go fast around a track, as it's another sub 8 minute Nürburgring car. The thing is, many Exige owners are likely to be track day gremlins too, so if you're buying one, remember that mileage is just a number, it's the track mileage you'd probably be more interested in as that's when it's getting thrashed the hardest. Also worth noting that Lotus used to stand for lots of trouble usually serious, it doesn't anymore given the reliable Toyota engine blocks, but it does remain an expensive brand when it comes to repairs. All in though, I think it's sad that the Exige alongside the Elise has reached the end of its life, and I genuinely hope to own one of these before it's too late. They start at around £55,000, and for the same price as a Golf R, you'll be looking at a 2021 example with fewer than 10,000 miles on the clock. Thank you very much for watching this video, and thank you also to the patrons that continue to support if you did enjoy it, a like would be much appreciated, as would a subscription if you're new here. And if you want to watch a video on some supercars that are cheaper than an SUV, then click up here and subscribe down here.